ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our exploration of the 2023 Nissan Aria. This is a new electric SUV from Nissan, actually made in Japan. An aerodynamic front end with, of course, no grill, air curtains leading to 21 inch wheels. The wheels are black and rather a copperish bronze color. Um, I, put, I personally in, I like that, but uh, not everyone may. It corresponds to that coppery bronze color on the interior appointments. You have a camera in the rear view mirror. The body is rather flat with a notable crease at the top that forms rather significant haunches, making this car look rather athletic. You can see that they've done a la Mustang Mach-E. They've uh, uh, made this look more like a fastback by leaving a fair amount of the roof above the silver trim line. There is a substantial tail section at the bottom of the rear window, and below that, the bumper and what appears to be A diffuser are prominent on the lower part of the back. There is a light bar that goes all the way across the back of this vehicle. There are wheel arch extensions that add to the SUV nature of this vehicle. You can see parking sensors there and the rear lip sticks out further than anything in the back. Now in the interior, this car has a combination uh, vinyl and fabric interior. The fabric, this car has been a factory car and the fabric was looking a little tired from people getting in and out of it. Now, coming around the front again, you can see that this car nods to the Nissan Murano in terms of the raised areas on the fenders, and you can see that from behind the wheel. Now, on the grill, behind a smoked clear plastic is a geometric pattern that you see repeated again in the interior. Keyless entry. Now you can see that the flat floor goes all the way across the interior, something I really enjoy. Now there are soft touch materials and there's that geometric pattern again all of those are soft touch materials and they vary a bit um, in terms of their actual makeup some hard plastic low down in the interior on the seats and doors and there's that geometric pattern on the front mat. 
the seats were comfortable. Along the side of the armrest, you can see that uh, copper bronze material, and again, also a longitudinal line all the way across the dash. Dash is somewhat reminiscent of the BMW iX. There is a driver attention monitor just on the top of the steering wheel. This car has a heads-up display. So the display in front of you is changeable to a number of different levels of information. My favorite is the one similar to the Tesla where it shows your position in relation to your lane and other cars. As with many cars with this much te technology, it would take a little while to adapt to the specific settings of this car. The steering wheel was thick enough, has bulges there and areas for the thumbs. You can see that it has the interior design where the door blends into the dash and wraps all the way around from driver to passenger. Now, in the center stack, the center screen, this is a combination view. There is another view giving you different information. And I rather like that, like the Lucid, you can see what your range is in typographical form. And then back to the audio and map settings. It was not possible to drive this car and so did not get a chance to test out the route planning or any of those things. There is, at the bottom of the dash, a wood trim that goes from one side to the other. And in the midst of that wood trim, in the middle, there are capacitive buttons that give a bit of haptic feedback. Now, this is the console that is movable backwards and forwards. And if you move it back, as I am there, you can see that it does get out of the way and give you a very roomy front area. Reminds me of the BMW i3 a bit. But that uh, console, even though it's moved back, still exists. So if it is back and you are sitting in the back, it does decrease your room. So pressing the open button and holding it allows the extension of this drawer slash surface. You know, if you were having something to eat in the car and you were stopped, you might want to use that as a TV tray. Then holding down on the close button, it closes up and it doesn't waste any time. This car does have a stop-start button 
on the dash. So you have a positive sense of whether the car is quote unquote running or not. Drive mode selectors on the console and then you can see sound system controls on the left hand side of the steering wheel And on the right-hand side, controls for the adaptive cruise control. This car has typical stocks, left being for lights, and right being for wipers. Now that does show you both a percentage and a mileage estimate. Now here are those capacitive buttons in the wood. Now, while that's a really creative idea, if you reached over as you were driving to try to change something using those, um, I think it might be a little bit hit or miss. You don't get a lot of feedback as to whether you have adequately touched the button to achieve what you were trying to achieve. So that was showing full map view and we tried to search for some things. I was actually wanting to find the closest Electrify America, but uh, we got the tobacco outlet instead. Now, there is this physical button that turns the sound system off or adjusts the volume that is just a terrific thing to have. That and physical controls for the air conditioning and heating. An even softer touch material on the upper part of the dash And while this car is pleasing in the interior, there is an awfully lot of plastic. Looking at the hood there, that is a fender and central dome appearance. Again, similar to the Murano. I guess that's similar to a 911. So looking back down at the dash, I look forward to a chance to drive this car and be able to find out how to use the different drive modes and screens that you have access to. Again, these buttons are capacitive touch through the wood. It's a Qi phone charger. And kind of a nice thing about that, there is an indicator light that shows you that the, wh whoever's phone is sitting there is indeed charging so that uh, you are getting the charge you want. I'm about six feet tall and that front seat is set for me. And so I'm going to climb in the back. 
and now the console is all the way forward but if it were back it would be taking a fair amount of room away now you can see that my knees are within millimeters of the seat um, if that and so not a tremendous amount of leg room definitely passable um, not sure if for a long trip it would be comfortable for four adults. Kids, of course, would be fine in the back. Then there is, as you see, a full-length moonroof with a crossbar there. And there is a sunshade that electronically covers the glass to keep the sun out. The back of this car, again, very interesting. I like the light bar with Nissan kind of floating there. And so here's the cargo area Below each of those panels on the bottom is a small storage area. We've got controls to raise and lower the tailgate. Nice amount of storage on either side. As I said, then under each of the panels there is the charger. And if one wanted to put the charger in one of those side compartments, then this area could be left put things that you didn't want seen from the outside. There's a nice amount of light in the cargo area. There's an LED light on either side that putting in or taking out luggage or whatever in the dark would not be a daunting task. There is a wiper on the rear window, which is a very, very nice thing. We'll close that without the lock feature. And the spoiler on top of the rear window is functional and directs air over its top and down underneath it. There's that silver body line and a car with that. And again, Mustang Mach-E did a great job, but a car with leaving a bit of the roof above that line, it just looks sportier. Looks like a sport bag. And indeed, the rear window of this car is kind of rakishly slanted. That wraps up our look at a newcomer to this segment, the Nissan Aria. More to come. I look forward to driving it and giving you some feedback. Uh, there are several models, um, some all-wheel drive, some two-wheel drive, two different sizes of battery, and I believe that the longest range is 300 miles. Take care, and thanks for watching.